Today's episode of Fantasy Fiction is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash fantasyfiction. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, whatever that is. Today we're recommending The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is a story both Reese's and I enjoy. And it coincides with the fantasy theme. So if you're enjoying the podcast, give the free trial a chance. It'll help pay for some of the hosting. I'm not sure what that is. Quick, download it before the movie comes out post haste. Enjoy the episode. Hey everybody, welcome to the Fantasy Fiction Podcast. My name is Dominic. My name is Josh. And this week we are telling stories about forbidden spells. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa, that was a wicked forbidden guitar solo. Dude, hell yeah, man, I'm ready. It was a a little bluesy. Yeah, it was so so forbidden. Oh, man. It was like sex. (laughs) Guitar sex. (laughs) But first... Josh, what did you do this week? Uh, well, it's Halloween week. Uh, actually, we are recording this on Halloween. Uh, so I watched a lot of uh, Twilight Zone. Oh yeah. Uh, season two got the one with Shatner and the uh, the when he goes to the diner and that fortune telling machine. I don't remember. Shatner's the name in that one too. Oh yeah. Oh, I forgot. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's actually featured in California Adventure at uh, the Tower of Terror ride. Wait, they have that? You step into a room, you watch like a little Twilight Zone uh, vignette, like a little intro, Mm -hmm. and that room is like covered in dust and it's decorated like a little museum, or a little uh, library rather, and if you look up top, there's uh, that fortune telling machine up there covered in cobwebs, it's really cool. No, does it really tell the real fortune, like the future, does it do it? It does, but if you try and do it, they kick you out of California Adventure. Oh, Jesus, man, that's Mm -hmm. rough, that's totally worth it though. It is worth it because I'm gonna ask, are we are, are we gonna find true love one day? Yeah, you and I. Well, that's yeah, that's what I would ask too. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that you you know. I just want to know. I just want to <laughs> know you little you little vending machine. Just give me the answers. <laughs> I feel like I haven't really celebrated Halloween at all. It's mm-hmm. it's Halloween right now, and we're recording <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> on that night. Friday and Saturday last week, those were the days to celebrate. Halloween. Right, right. That's when everyone had the parties, and yeah. uh huh. And and that Friday we recorded. <laughs> right. And and then uh, that Saturday I went to a They Might Be Giants show. That's pretty awesome. It was cool, although it was all the way at UCLA, which is all the way across town, and. It took the whole night. And they played great. It was a great show. They played all of the first album, which is my favorite. However, there there was one guy in the audience who, like, they started playing uh, a Rhythm Section One ad, which is a great song. Mm-hmm. And they don't play it very often, from what I hear. And this kid in front of me threw up the double horns. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Flagrant <laughs> misuse of horns. Hold on here. <laughs> Did it a They Might Be Giant show? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> What other Twilight Zone episodes did you watch? I watched um, one of my favorite ones. Uh, again, I don't remember the name of it, but uh, Next Stop Willoughby. No. Next Stop Willoughby. That's no. a street here in LA, by the way. That's a great like, one. Holy though. shit! It's Willoughby. That is a good one. <laughs> it's uh, the one where the guy, a guy, is like lost in a storm, and he comes up on like this hermitage, and like they're keeping the devil in this closet. And, oh, like, dude, I love that episode. Yeah. That's one of the best. Yeah, it's really good. And like the, he's like uh, he's like oh. You know, let me out of yeah, here. Yeah, he's like oh. howling. He's like, oh, I think it's yeah. called like the man oh. that howls or something like that. That is like one of my favorite ones. And it's like that weird village of like men with beards and stuff. Yeah, they're all like looking like Moses-y and they got canes and stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, at first you think that they're like kidnapping these guys and, and like, but it turns out that it's really the Having devil. their way with them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought, too. I'm glad I'm glad I wasn't the only one. You know what episode I really enjoy is the one with the aliens come and land on oh, this yeah, woman's yeah. house. I think it's called and they like, start like like uh, Meadow Street or something like that, or the Trouble on something uh, you're, Street. You're thinking, I think, uh, 
uh, Elm, not Elm Street, but like Oak Street or yeah, something that's, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great one. I'm talking about the one where the aliens land on this woman's house and the oh, woman yeah. starts like fighting them off and they're like these little aliens. Yeah. And then at the end, it goes over the ship and it says, The United <laughs> States. Oh my God. Where were they? What happened to them? How did they get so small? <laughs> Uh, dude, did you see the episode where, like, the guy, there's this guy, and it's, like, World War, I think it's, like, the end of World War II, mm-hmm. and, like, he goes to into the bathroom, and, uh, he, like, goes to take a, take a piss, and he, uh, and he takes out his, his big old stinky dick. Yeah. And, uh, and, like, uh, it's, like, really big. Oh, my God. I, how does that one, is that how that one ends? I don't remember that one. I don't want to spoil it for you. <laughs> But the dude's just his hog is just on television. I gotta tell you, it's a, it's a big wiener. <laughs> I gotta check that one out, man. <laughs> With that, let's get into some fantasy. What do you say, old chap? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dom, you ready for this one? Nope. <laughs> All right, show over. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> My story is called The Greatest Spell of Them All. Oh, ho- uh, hold up, hold up. First, <laughs> this is a show about forbidden spells. Yeah. And you're about to tell a story about a forbidden spell that is also the greatest spell. You'll, it'll make a lot of sense to you in a minute. Tell you what, I'm... Way interested. That's good storytelling. <laughs> it, I hope so. I hope so. All right. In all her years as a great wizard, Ugla had never encountered such powerful magic. The moment her big green eyes gazed upon Sid the Troll during the cave heist, she was completely and hopelessly bone hungry for his hot troll bod. Whoa. Yeah, man, she's ready to go. Call back to Ugla. Yeah, man. <laughs> Is Ugla beautiful? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, well we, we can talk about it. We got some, there's some things happening. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, all right. <laughs> but how is she going to profess her love to him? Rogues and wizards rarely fraternize. I mean, they're not even the same armor class. There was only <laughs> one option, she reasoned, to hit Sid with the most powerful and forbidden spell she knew. The love spell of getting insta-buck. <laughs> but first, she had to find him. That's an awesome spell name. <laughs> well, that's exactly what that does. <laughs> it's very descriptive. No one no one could confuse that one. <laughs> For centuries, the love spell had been forbidden amongst wizards and sorcerers. Turns out that most wizards were using it on their dead wives. For about 80 years, the entire countryside <laughs> of Daranos was an orgy of skeletons and undead just getting nasty. Oh my god! <laughs> Some say that if you listen carefully during the twilight hours, you can still hear the bones of a thousand dead skeletons just going at it. <laughs> to this day, it is known as the Great Bone Down of the Middle Age. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Bone Down. You can hear them. Click, clack, 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 clack. <laughs> hey, stop it, you two. <laughs> Knock it off, skeletons. Ah, damn. They caught us. <laughs> we bad. <laughs> we bad, skeleton. <laughs> Ugla pulled her low rider horseless cart up to a local tavern. <laughs> he has to be in this one. I've checked at literally tens of bars, and I know that hot piece of man dick loves to do his best drinking on a moon's day night. <laughs> Ugla got down from her horseless car, and the hydraulics let out a hiss of steam. (laughs) She looked up at the name of the tavern. It read, The Ogre Shaft, open 69 days a week, 69 hours a day. (laughs) She approached the swinging doors of the tavern when suddenly a door flew out of the door and landed on his stomach with a thud. Oh yeah, he's here, Ugla said. Then the dwarf burst into flames. (laughs) So he got thrown out and he burst <laughs> in the place. Yeah, dude. This place don't fuck around, man. The ogre shaft? <laughs> fuck, man. Can't be oh starting no shit. God. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> she walked into the tavern and found a quiet booth in the back. Nobody noticed her as she walked by the drunken, rowdy patrons. There were orcs, double orcs, centaurs, gnomes, pixies, dead orcs, high elves, mid elves, low elves, and Norm from Cheers. <laughs> the place was going crazy. Everyone was wasted, and Ugly even thought that she saw a pixie giving a blowy to a double orc. It looked like that pixie had her work cut out for her. Yup, just another moon's day at the ogre shaft. <laughs> Ugly sack. Cl- Sexy and violent. <laughs> it's just, it's like fucking crazy place, man. Oh my god. I'd go there. Yeah, count me in. I'm part owner. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet investor. Silent investor. Silent investor. <laughs> Ugly sat quietly in the booth, scoping out the place for Sid. After a moment, she noticed a crowd of patrons gathered around the table. At the table sat Flyman, and on top of the table was Sid, doing jump kicks. The crowd was going crazy. (laughs) Flyman! Cameo! He's here. (laughs) There he is, thought Ugla. All right, here goes nothing. Ugla got out her magic wand of magic, which was made from an old haunted ass tree's dick, and began to chant the magic (laughs) incantation. I don't see nothing wrong (laughs) with a little bump and grind, she spoke. (laughs) A purple beam of cool-ass magic shot out from the wand and shot straight towards Sid. But just then, a waiter with a golden chalice got in her line of sight. The spell hit off the chalice and ricocheted toward the wall, hitting a candelabra. The candelabra sparkled and twinkled, and then came to life. Looks like old candelabra's gonna get some wizard fucking in tonight, it shattered. (laughs) Oh my god! Ugh, great, Ugla said. The candelabra jumped off the wall and sauntered its way over to her. So, uh, did you fall from heaven because my three candlesticks want to get all up in them guts? Dough, <laughs> it said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that's stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. Meanwhile, Sid had moved on from jump kicks to doing one-arm pull-ups while drinking a flaming flag in a mead. Oh, my, oh, my word. <laughs> A rival gnome rogue stepped up to Sid and started to say some shit. What did you say, little man? Sid said raspily as he finished off the flaming brew and dropped down to the floor. I said, you're the sorriest excuse for a thief Big D has ever seen, you shitty piece of butt shit. The crowd gathered around the table let out a, oh. Sid doesn't abide by no haters, little man, and he drew his daggers. Before the gnome could react, Sid had the advantage. Sid unleashed the most accurate and devastating jump kick he could muster. He kicked the gnome (laughs) right in the jaw, and the gnome flew back against the wall where a dartboard was hanging. Sid then eyed up his shot as the gnome's body hit the dartboard. He threw his left-handed dagger. It hit the gnome right in the eye and went through his skull, hitting the bullseye. The gnome hung there all dead and shit. (laughs) Bullseye, you piece of trash talking shitty trash. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Ugla sat at her table in awe My god, he's amazing, she said She again drew her wand and prepared to cast a spell Just then, the candelabra began to do the hustle <laughs> <laughs> What? This fucking candelabra Dude, he's a fucking, he's cock blocking her, man Do you like to dance, it asked Just as Ugla <laughs> unleashed a spell, the candelabra grabbed her hand And tried to pull her to the dance floor The spell let loose completely off target it soared across the bar and found a mark. It was Flyman. No. <laughs> Flyman sparkled and twinkled and then slowly turned his head toward Ugla. Ugla was horrified and red with embarrassment. It's okay, Flyman murmured. I'm incapable of love anyhow. Then he lowered his head and cried acid tears into his mug and the mug melted. Oh, poor Flyman. <laughs> Did you say something, Flyman? Sid asked. No, I'm just... Talking to myself again while I contemplate suicide. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, classic fly, man. (laughs) You're all right, fly. You're all right, fly, man. (laughs) Jesus, titties, that was a close one, Ugla sighed. She mustered up all her mana and tried one last time. This time, her wand found the mark, and the spell hit Sid right in the dick. Ah, my dick! What the (laughs) shit is this shit? Sid cried out. A forbidden love spell? Ha 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 ha! Who shot me with this trash ass spell? Love <laughs> spells don't work on old Sid. Ugla was mortified. Sid scanned the bar looking for the culprit. His eyes locked on Ugla's, and Ugla quickly and awkwardly turned away. Sid got up and jump kicked his way over to Ugla's booth. <laughs> Did you shoot me with a forbidden love spell? He asked. 
What, me? N no, 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 no. Forbidden love spells are forbidden, she replied nervously. I remember you, Sid said. Yeah, you're that wizard lady from the cave heist. Baby girl, if you wanted a date with Sid, all you had to do was come over and talk to me. <laughs> You'd want to date a lady wizard? Even one with a gnarly ass wizard beard? The only concern Sid has about that beard is, do the curtains match the face? <laughs> Sid took Ugla's hand and kissed it like a gentleman. <laughs> then the two danced all night. Sid scrapbooked the whole thing. Oh, man. <laughs> Flyman sat at the table alone. The crowd had all moved to the dance floor to watch Sid and Ugla do the Dougie. <laughs> I give it a month, he said. And a single <laughs> tear fell from his horribly sick, fucked up face and melted the table. <laughs> the end. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. <laughs> It's got a really nice story. It kind of is. I just love how he, like, says that nasty-ass line, and then he acts all like a gentleman. Yeah, this fucking disgusting-ass line, and then he kisses her hand, and they dance all night, and then you know they go home and they make love. They don't, yeah. they don't fuck. It, they it make was love. Just, yeah, exactly. What a great first date. Also, I like that Flyman was there to balance <laughs> things out. It's not too mushy. <laughs> And Sid's killing people. Sid just killed a man. Then he took a girl on a date in dude. the same bar. The guy is still bleeding. <laughs> dude, that's that's Sid, man. That's his life, baby. Dude, I'm about to get Sid tattooed on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> we should get uh, Sid and Throm tattoos. Like each. <laughs> dude, that would be awesome. Dude, that's a really good real idea. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm not even joking. <laughs> not even joking, guys. If this gets to a part, a place in our lives where it's really important, <laughs> we'll get those tattoos. Dude, absolutely. It's pretty Lots important right now. I mean, we're recording on Halloween. Exactly. I'm not even hanging out with any of my friends on Halloween, except you, Dom, of course. Yeah, well, except you. Except you. <laughs> All right, Josh. My story is called No Rules. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was it was a bright, crisp moon autumn day in Orkspire. Mm. Goblins, orcs, elves, and various other creatures were going about their usual business, while half-orc goblin elves were on the hunt for some sweet, sweet afternoon poon, as usual. <laughs> That's just part of their, their daily ritual. That's what they do. Yeah. They don't do much else. Yeah. And the wizards were heading to class at Wizard Temple University. <laughs> A state wizard school. Go wizard owls. Go wizard owls. <laughs> that's a great, that's great. <laughs> wizard owls. That's perfect. Wizards hurried through the halls, not wanting to be late for their lessons. Some ran barefoot, others rode brooms, but one particular wizard was dark side grinding on wizard staffs, <laughs> left and right, just for the fuck of it. He kick flipped off the last broom and did a hand plant on some lockers and flipped off the principal, who just so happened to be standing at the end of the <laughs> hall, watching the wizard's every move. Radicast the wild wizard? My office now. Oh, man. Yelled the wizard principal. The young wizard was busted. By the way, it's Radicast, not, not Radagast. Not Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. This is different. This is different, guys. Yeah. It's canon. It's canon. <laughs> Radicast sat in the wizard principal's waiting room, flossing his I don't give a fuck attitude. He wore a long black robe with a black leather jacket over it. The jacket had patches of popular metal bands in Orc Spire on it. There was Battle Keg, Orc Skull, and Broadsword, an all chick band. <laughs> Broadsword. <laughs> Rad had a long black beard and a pretty scarred up face. He'd been in a few wizard battles in his day, and his face showed it. He wore black sunglasses to cover this up. Radicast the wild wizard, the wizard principal will see you now, said the fine-ass wizard receptionist. <laughs> Radicast walked into the office. The wizard principal sat behind his ancient desk, examining his wizard staff. Rad, said the principal, what makes you think that the rules don't apply to you? 
Fuck off on a demon's dick, you bag of used or condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Said Radicast. Rad, I understand you had a bit of a tough upbringing. Starting when both of your parents... You don't know shit, you piece of rainbow-colored dragon jizz from an old dragon sore peen that he was cursed to beat for a thousand centuries? Dude, he shouted Radicat. He's so quick with the fucking uh, insults. He's like he's like a modern-day Bard Simpson. <laughs> Wizard Principal let out a sigh. Looks like the only way you'll learn to play by the rules is making you play by the rules. Radicast the wild wizard, I hereby enforce rule number 6,871. No dark side grinding on wizard staffs in the hallways and flipping off the wizard principal during moon autumn. Anyone who breaks this rule must repeat the 121st grade. Dude, I hate this dick. Dude, can you believe it? I, I, I hate him. Radicast stood, doubled down. That's flipping someone off with both fingers <laughs> pointing downward. <laughs> then kicked over the principal desk. Jesus. <laughs> Magical items fell all over the place And a spell shot out from a wand That hit the wizard principal's favorite painting of himself And turned it into a painting of a dog's butt <laughs> That That pissed him off But Radicast had already left <laughs> It's like I can see it It's like I'm there And the dog's butt It's tails up Like it's like a, one of those dogs That always has his tail up So you always mm-hmm. see its butthole oh, yeah. And it's like a real nice painting Yeah It's like it's really nice He's like, well, I can't get rid of this. I mean, it's beautiful. (laughs) It's so well done. I mean, it would be a crime. (laughs) Although Rad was furious, he decided to attend the only class he enjoyed at Wizard Temple University, summoning. He was late, but there were no fucks to be given this day. Mm -hmm. Radicast kicked open the door and sat in his desk. The professor didn't seem to notice as he was getting ready to give some instructions. Uh, students, welcome to the first summoning class of this semester. Today we'll briefly be going over the textbook. If you open your textbook to the table of contents, you'll see all the different summoning spells are separated by chapters and neatly laid out for you. Now, if you look closely, you'll realize there's a chapter labeled Forbidden Spells in the textbook. I cannot stress this enough. You are never to turn to that section and read any of those spells (laughs) ever. For these are the tools any wizard could use to conquer the world, or worse, end it. (laughs) Radicast perked up. It's just printed in a textbook. (laughs) Damn. Dude, it wasn't a good idea. (laughs) Radicast perked up. He grabbed his textbook and turned to the table of contents. Sure enough, there it was. Forbidden spells. This section is especially dangerous to a wizard who feels like he'd been wronged by society, (laughs) dealt a bad hand, so to speak, or a wizard looking to enact revenge on another wizard, or a wizard who just so happens to be a self-destructive rule breaker with a bad or rad attitude. (laughs) These forbidden spells would prove very useful to a wizard in any of those scenarios. (laughs) Again, I must stress that you do not check out that section of the book. (laughs) Dude. This is each of rules, man. <laughs> Radicast was fascinated. There were pages on summoning demons, monsters, creatures, things he couldn't even pronounce, monstrosities, abominations, even how to summon illegal wizard weed candy. Oh, yeah, man. This was what Radicast was looking for his whole life. <laughs> I will admit it was a bad idea to print these forbidden spells in a textbook, and it was an even worse idea for us to buy those textbooks and give them all to you guys. (laughs) I guess I could go ahead and tear out every page of the forbidden spells section of each book, but that would take a long time, and frankly, between teaching you guys, grading papers, and trying to get some stank on my hang down, I don't have that opportunity. (laughs) This is the coolest teacher in the entire school. (laughs) Therefore, everyone pinky promised me that you'll never turn to that part of the book. Starting with you, (laughs) Dagnorski. This teacher started to pinky swear each wizard. Radicast held the book tight and skateboarded out of class. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll get your pinky swear later, (laughs) Radicast. Professor. Oh Radicast hurried back to his cave dorm, set up his cauldron, and started mixing up all sorts of stuff. Rules? Yeah, right. My too extreme, too rad, too bad attitude ain't gonna conform to no stupid-ass dumb butt rules. <laughs> Rad dropped a bat beast's golden tooth 
into the cauldron. Demons, holla if you hear me! (laughs) And with that, the room filled with a purple mist, and a massive dark blue demon pulled himself out of the potion. Oh, man. The demon had several eyes of all shapes and types, with small red wings on his back that were once used for flight, but no longer could carry his muscly body. The demon spoke. Sup. Dude. Not much, replied Rad. Just doing forbidden fucking spells. <laughs> cool, cool, I dig, said the demon. Well, I'm Phil, and I hunger for flesh, so if there's anybody you want me to kill... Oh, right, right. Um, You know what? Go crazy said Radicast, and the demon walked out of the cave on his way to go kill some stuff. Be home by 10, Rad shouted after him. I like how there are no rules, but Rad's like, be home by 10. <laughs> well, he wants to, he cares about it, them. He just summoned them. In my head, they're like best friends now. Like, that's like, yeah. they're, they're BFF. Mm-hmm. Well, they, you know, they connect, you know? They're, they're both too yeah. rad, too bad. Yeah. Radicast stood over his cauldron again. Okay, first forbidden spell out of the way. Feels good, feels good. <laughs> now, to mix them all together. Oh my god. <laughs> and Radicast started cooking up all the summoning spells at once. He was tossing in harpy feathers, bones from a gelatinous cube, hairs from an ogre's taint, mm. goblin press on nails, cyclops hoop earrings, anything you could think of was going into this insane mixture. <laughs> and finally, spoke Radicast. The lips of an orc's brother-in-law. <laughs> and he dropped them in. The room filled with a thick black mist. Radicast began to cough. Something seemed to be pulling itself out of the cauldron, but he couldn't see anything. Finally, the mist cleared, and there, stood in front of Radicast, was a skeleton with seven hats on. Oh, what the no. fuck? And suddenly, the skeleton started singing. My heart's been assassinated by my ex-girlfriend. I caught her kissing a half-four goblin elf last night on my birthday. I couldn't believe it. And they was Frenching. It was so hot. Steam was coming off of them. He was buff and she felt so safe into his muscles. And I'm just a bony boy. Baby, come back to my heart. Resurrect my love tonight. XOXO. Hat skeleton. And he tipped his seven hats. Oh my god, I fucking love this skeleton so goddamn much. (laughs) Radicast was confused. Who the shit are you? He yelled. Suddenly, the hat skeleton turned its head and looked deep into Radicast's eyes. Rad stared back into the black eye sockets that seemed endless. He stared and stared for what seemed like hours as he began to see unspeakable things, horrors no man could ever imagine, like behemoths getting their heads ripped off by eagles or something, and then those heads eating the eagles and replanting themselves back into the sea and growing to a full behemoth again. I don't know, I said it was unspeakable! Radicast felt painfully ill. He looked at his hand. His skin started to turn gray, and the blood in his veins a deep purple. He took off his sunglasses, looked in the mirror, and saw that his eyes had turned a dark red, then a full black. In a twisted voice, he shouted, What's happening to me? As black horns sprouted from his forehead. As Radicast continued to transform, more hat skeletons pulled themselves out of the cauldron oh and wandered God. off into orc spire. Someone was coming up the mountain. Hat skeletons walked past him <laughs> as he approached the mouth of the cave. Radicast, what have you done? It was the wizard principal himself. <laughs> Radicast turned around to reveal a barely recognizable wizard of what he once was. The madness of the hat skeleton's eye had warped his mind and body. Wizard principal... Hat skeletons, are you insane, Radicast the Wild? <laughs> I am no longer Radicast the Wild Wizard. I am now Radic the Wicked Wizard. Oh my That's God. wicked with a Y. Wicked. With two, wait, wicked in the front or wicked in the back? Wicked in the front. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Principal, just broke rule 6,872. Being a fucking piece of shit asshole, no dick having loser. <laughs> I sentence you to insanity. 
Raddick pointed his finger at the principal and shot a green spell at his forehead. It hit. Principal Wizard grabbed a nearby broom and shouted, Fucking apples! He flew out of the cave straight up into the air and jumped off, falling 20,000 feet to oh his death. Oh my god. Raddick the Wicked laughed maniacally as hat skeletons continued to wander out into Orkspire. The end. Dude, what's gonna happen? Dude! Oh my Dude. god. I think a big bad wizard just showed up is all i'm gonna say dude that was a great story dude that was awesome <laughs> i liked the uh the like the high school like high school movie like aspect of it and then it just goes fucking crazy metal in the end and it's fucking great <laughs> thank you i love it that hat skeleton song is now known throughout the land well, are they all singing it are they all just going around singing this song? well each i would say each hat skeleton is their own performing artist, you know? So they <laughs> yeah. each have their own little style and twist on things, but that one's like a hit. Oh, yeah, dude. The first hat skeleton, you know? So Somebody needs to isolate that and remix it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone <laughs> needs to remix my awful tuned voice. Dude, it's going to be so good. If somebody does it, it's going to be so good. <laughs> I would like to amend myself and say that that was not the first hat skeleton because the wizard principal knew that they were hat skeletons. Yeah, yeah. and also uh, Canon says that there has been hat skeletons before. Mm-hmm. This is, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what's gonna happen. Songs, songs like that floating out into works smile. Damn man, we in trouble. <laughs> Shit's going crazy. <laughs> Hello again out there. This is Reese's the Wise. And this is Old Snickerdoodle, and we want to welcome you to... Another edition of Chamber of Knowledge. Yes, it's where we answer your questions, and you get good answers. First first scroll! First scroll, all right. First scroll is from Matt Servold on Twitter, at MattVold15M. He asks... What is Halloween like in Orkspire and Daranos? Well, I understand you people have some sort of holiday where you dress up and you go out and you trick or trat, I believe it's called, and you receive fruit from people. And, we, you know, we have something like that. A yes. little like that. Uh, 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 Reese's, uh, care to elaborate? Well, in Daranos, I don't know how it is in Orkspire, but in Daranos, uh, you knock on somebody's door and you say, Give me some fruit or I'll fucking murder you. You know, that's a little, that's a little different than it is here. Uh, <laughs> we, we knock on the door and we say, Hello, give me a fruit. <laughs> that's a lot nicer. It is, and uh, you can do it any day. Uh, oh, wow. you can knock on anyone's door and say, hello, give me a fruit. And, uh, and, uh, sometimes you get one, other times you, you get murdered. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Not so different, our peoples. Me not thinks. so, not so different. Not, not so different, are we. Uh, actually, I, I you know, I said any day, but I, I, I really meant any day in this one week that just so happens to also fall on the week of Hall Halloween. So it's it's just that week. Interesting. Don't go, I don't I don't I don't want to go crazy here. Next scroll. Numi Prasan asks, "What's the next big holiday in Orkspire and or Daranos aside from Beer's Day?" Well, in Daranos, it's all Whiskey's Eve, which is when you go out and just get fucking hammered like goddamn shit face, goddamn crazy. You know, we have a similar holiday here in in Orkspire, and that's all Weeds Eve. Oh. And uh, you go out, and uh, you, you you try to score some wizard weed, and uh, you smoke that shit. You roll that shit and smoke it. Those are some very good lyrics for your new rap album, <laughs> Snickerdoodle. <laughs> it's good to be fucking off the chain, man. Mm-hmm. Like we are. We are supreme. 
Word. Next scroll. Next scroll is from David Cole at Hitchhike for Kid 34 Minutes. <laughs> he asks, How did you guys handle your student loans after going to Wizard Yell? Stick a doodle out of your Well, as, your loans. as I've said before, I, I did not go to Wizard Yell, but I, I did go to a Wizard Community College, and mm. it was pretty affordable, and I managed to hold a part time job while going to classes, and I got a pretty good education, and here I am now answering your questions. So, Very good. if I could say to someone who wants to go to college, uh, spend two years at a community college. That's good advice in any realm. That is just solid advice. It's very, very, very good. Yes. I, what I did, I just uh, conjured up some uh, gold and I paid for it. It's very simple. You just conjured gold. You can just conjure gold. Yeah, I mean, it's really not that difficult once you get to be, uh, you know, well, how, this level of wizard. How could, how come you never told me this? I could have gone to wizard yell. You never asked me. I just assumed you wanted to, you know, do it your way. I didn't want to impose on you. My way? I had to drive to school every day in my, in my broom. I would have given you a ride. I didn't know. <laughs> You were away at Wizard Yale having a fuckathon. And I was doing a lot of that. That is very true. I'm a little disappointed. Do you, I mean, do you want some gold? I'll just give it to you. I mean, it kind is like useless home. now. Home. I am too rich. We are very My rich. My brain is so smart. The kingdoms give me gold to just come by town. It's pretty sweet. They do do that. It's fucking awesome, actually. Yes, it is fucking awesome. <laughs> we Still are, pissed. We Next are awesome. scroll. <laughs> Next scroll. Alex Simcox asks, What is the creepiest, most rank ghoul to go about in Orkspire? Well, mm. that would have to be the Dilapidos. Oh, and yes. that is that is a that is a ghoul who is who is a, a, a ghoul, not a zombie, not a skeleton, a ghoul. And Dilapidos, he is a man who he you know, he was he was on his way out. He was about to die. An old man. He fell into an old swamp and got a spell. Accidentally shot a spell at himself um, when he was fallen, turned into a ghoul, and now he's uh, and now he stinks real bad. Man, this guy is terrible at dying. <laughs> yes, and now he wanders the world looking for his lost sister. Oh, spooky. Yes, he was on his way out. He was thought his sister was lost forever. But now that he, now that he is eternal as a ghoul, as a stinky old ghoul, uh, he's determined to find his sister. And I doubt she would recognize him. He is hideous. Probably not. I mean, he he smells terrible too. I don't I don't think she would want to have any part of that. Here's a little fact. Here's a little fact. Yes. I know where both of them are. Oh, I could reunite them. But I do not mingle in the acts of those who are ghouls and sisters. I let them figure it out. Next scroll! <laughs> that is stone cold, Snickerdoodle. Community College. <laughs> Okie dokie. Dylan Spooky Mago at Dylan Show 46M. S. Name the four phallus smelling things in all the land. Okay. Number one, Nindaranos. Orc taint. Orc taint? Fucking disgusting. It'll get ya. You yes. can... If, a, if an orc just relaxes just a little bit in a bar, it just, just slouches just a little bit and spreads his legs, you can st almost see the stink fumes oh, coming from... God. You, you know when, his like... Crotch. You know when, like, an orc wears, like, the, 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 uh, the shorts... And like you can kind of see up. Orc booty toward, shorts. Yes. yes. You can kind of see up toward like the uh, the stank region. Oh my god! If you look directly at it, you will go blind. Oh my goodness! You and you can see if you look closely, you can see this black orc hairs. Oh god! I'm going to I'm going to vomit. That and the disgusting. booty shorts say stuff like "sweetheart." <laughs> I don't know why they make them. I don't know why they wear them. Orcs, they, they do not care, Snickerdoodle. They don't care. Next, oh, wait. We can't say next scroll. There are three other things we have to answer. Yes. They asked we must fulfill the question. Uh, number two, used orc condom. 
Oh my god. Dear lord. The jizz I should in those be more things. specific. I should be more specific. A used ore condom used on an old dragon. Oh, look out. Holy mother. Because those things live forever. Number three. Discarded ass tampons of an orc. Holy. Oh, my goodness. They use them when they have orc hemorrhoids. Holy. Oh. Good lord, I think I smell it now. It, once you smell one of them, it's oh. like a skunk. You just you constantly smell it. It doesn't oh, go away. You got to use tomato juice. Burns my nose. Oh. Oh. oh, and number four. Well, that would be skunks. Yep. Next troll! Mike Hacks asks, mm. Do you practice alchemy as well as magic? Oh my god, yes. It's like... It's like first year shit at uh, Wizard Yale. Well, that was kind of third year shit at community oh, that, college. That's okay, that's okay. I mean, I'm sure you learned, like, you know, the basics, like, uh, turning iron into platinum, which is very I valuable. Do, uh, turning platinum not, back into lead. I do. I do not know either of those spells. I did not know you could do that. And I, I, ass I assume you do that. I don't know why you turn platinum back into lead. That's sort of stupid. But you learn how to do it. I don't. I don't know. What else did you? What other potions do you know? I know how to make. I know how to, how to make punch. That's it. Invisible pants potion. That's not that's a big one. What? Yeah. It's pretty awesome. You get the comfort of, of the snugness of wearing pants, but if you want like people to look at your wiener, you did invisible pants potion. I know how to make punch and brass monkeys. That's it. Brass monkeys are pretty awesome. I could use a brass monkey to get to calm me down. I'm I'm with you. I'm right there with you. Next scroll, please. Next let's, scroll. Let's move on. Alright, next scroll is from Josh Robertson. He asks, how did Biff Swift Dagger come to command so many damn owls? Well, that's easy. He is an elf, and he is very handsome. He has high charisma, mm. so pretty much anything he wants relating to nature, he gets, including it's very good. sex. Oh, owl yes. sex or just regular ass Just sex, sex with uh, Mother Nature. Mother Nature, yes. Good. She's, uh, she is a tempterist. I would, I'm not disagreeing with that one, Snickerdoodle. I saw, I saw, not Biff, but I saw an elf making out with a volcano once. Damn. Mm-hmm. Next scroll. Samuel James Quick asks, What was Gary like in his days before becoming a skeleton slave slash warrior slash boneheaded badass? Well, Gary was a very nice guy. He was, you know, just a just a swell dude. He would help you build a cart. He would help you plow your field. Uh, that is not a double entendre. He was just very good at plowing fields. He was just a regular ass dude. <laughs> but this was and this was before he became a skeleton and before he stole the apples. Yeah, when he stole the apples and got killed, uh, he was he was still very nice afterward. But he. You know, he couldn't really plow anymore because of his uh, bone arms. Well, uh, the Gary in Orkspire, I can go ahead and sum that up in a in a song about him, and it goes a little like this: mm, Gary, uh, you know you want it, you want a piece of him. He is so handsome, and his teeth look like mirrors, cause they're so shiny. And when it touches you, you fall in love for the first time. Damn. So uh, that kind of that kind of sums it up. He was kind of a star fucker. That is fantastic, Snickerdoodle. Mm -hmm. I did not know your voice was that beautiful. I well, must it say, it is not. I was. I'll tell you the truth. Little fact I learned at community college. Yes, I can summon other people's voices. That's the same thing as singing, as far as I'm concerned, if not better. I agree. I agree. Next scroll. That is all the scrolls I have. That is all the scrolls I have. Good. Well then, good day to you. These are all the information you shall receive. There will be no more until next week when we ask to submit your scrolls. Just do it and do it in a timely manner because we got stuff we're doing these days. Yep. True that, Snickerdoodle.
we're having a we're having a fort fight. We're oh. seeing who can build the better forts. We're building forts. It's going to be epic. The loser has to make brownies. I do not want to make brownies. I do. <laughs> I, I'm going to lose on purpose. It suits me just. Fine. Don't tell. Don't tell the Reese's. I heard everything. Fuck. Okay, well that was uh, some more interesting knowledge from Reese's and Snickerdoodle. They're always a wealth of information. They are. And they seem to have a weird relationship where they go back and forth between being really in love with each other and just kind of mad at each other. I guess that's what you get, like, over the centuries of living with somebody. You know, you Mm kind of have that, like, odd couple thing going on. True. But they were building forts and making brownies afterwards so i guess everything's fine yeah they're probably all right they'll be all right everything's okay guys it's all about being happy and making brownies (laughs) uh (laughs) uh, before we go we want to thank uh jacob stancliffe for drawing an awesome illustration of throm out in the cold from last week's episode dude it's so good uh, you can check that out on the Facebook and Twitter. And he submitted it to the subreddit, which is uh, just Fantasy Fic. So check mm-hmm. it out if you want to check it out. We're Fantasy Fiction on Facebook and Fantasy Fic Pod on Twitter. Also, the shirt will be out this week. I promise you that because it's done. I just have to kind of put stuff up. That's all. But it's. I think it looks sharp. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you want to, uh, head over to the Spreadshirt. There'll be a link probably on on this somewhere. And, uh, you know, go buy a shirt if you uh, want to show your support for the show or, or whatever. I myself will be buying one, so... I'll be wearing it. I drew it, and I'll I'll be wearing it like a big ding-dong. Yep. People will ask me what it is. I'll be like, oh, it's my thing I made, and yep. uh, here's here's my thing. <laughs> I'll be doing that. I'll be doing that, too. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to show mm-hmm. your support for the show, still, uh, an easy way to do it is just to submit an iTunes review. That really helps us out. Uh, we're currently ranked, I think, 109 in comedy, beating out actual famous people, <laughs> which is really nice. Uh, but that's all due to you guys submitting re- uh, reviews and yes. downloading the podcast so thank you for listening thank you for just enjoying it yes, we're really you. happy that we get to do this uh consistently because we have some sort of fulfillment to uh you guys yeah. so we don't want to let you down so here we are in halloween doing this yep <laughs> dude i wouldn't be anywhere else tonight this is the this is a great time i love doing this so it's fun because it's hanging out with you who yep. i never get to see because you're across the country but then also yep. making each other laugh and then the fact that people are having fun with it i'm really it really makes me happy so thank you guys for listening and just being beautiful people i agree thank you very much <laughs> before we go the prompt for next week is submitted by our friend steph bomb who yeah. is actually a artist and you can check her out by just googling her name steph bomb uh she suggested snake lords <laughs> which josh and i thought was a great idea so tune in next week for some thulsa doom kind of shit yep yep thulsa doom yep. shooting snake i don't think we're gonna get to the point of shooting snake arrows because that's really ridiculous but they already did it. i think we're gonna go beyond the point of shooting snake arrows to yeah be honest i don't know you. maybe you guys should tune in and yeah. find out check it out all right well until next week guys you know what you gotta do Keep on wizarding. Keep on wizarding. Goodbye. Bye.